looking at today um, is uh, best practices for GPS analysis. So I really want to go over four things, right? Um, and, and there's a bit of a workflow here. So first and foremost, before we even start anal analyzing our, our data, we want to make sure that the data we have is correct. So the first thing I want to go over is how visualization of GPS data assists in um, identifying erroneous points in our data. So how does visualization help us with data va validation? A second, I want to look at hidden data, uh, more specifically stationary events. Quite often when we get GPS data in a, in a 2D visualization, um, two data points often occupy the, the same space but at different points in time. And in 2D, you know, one point sits on top of the other. So how do we identify stationary events? Uh, next speed. Uh, speed is actually an important um, indicator, especially inside GPS data. Um, as I'll show you shortly, uh, we can use speed to characterize suspect movement patterns. Lastly, um, as we're working with new data formats, we should really uh, have a better understanding of, of what it looks like when, for example, our, our GPS data um, or, or sorry, our devices switch over from using GPS data to, to GSM data. So if we're using um, any sort of uh, um, mobile devices, um, quite often we're, we're jumping between um, different data formats off the same device. So I'll, I'll address that issue in this presentation. So data validation. Quite often when we're looking at GPS data, we're either looking at it in a 2D view or in a tabular format. One of the things that visualization is able to do real quick, uh, real easily, is allow us to identify points that obviously do not belong in our data. So if we look at the image on the right hand side, we can clearly see that there are about five data points, sorry, four data points highlighted in blue that clearly don't belong. So what are the visual identifiers of this? First and foremost, they don't happen in the area of interest, right, um, when we plot them on a map. Uh, we couldn't identify that in, for example, a tabular format. Uh, second, the frequency of them is very low, right? We don't see any clustering in these outlier areas, right? So they're really one-off data points, right? If we had a cluster in, 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 in any of these areas, we could, we could deduce that our suspect was visiting that location for a long period of time. But here we can see they're really one-off events. Third, uh, putting this data in the context of a map, so a map is, as a type of visualization, um, it's quite informative and it's almost informative, so informative that it seems redundant. I'm telling you that one data point is occurring over water, I'm sorry, other two data points are occurring over water. Again, compare, you know, looking at this, compare this to looking at it in, in a, uh, a tabular format where you can't tell where locations are. Right, so by placing these dots on a map, we're able to identify these um, these erroneous data points. Uh, lastly, a sequence of events. Um, you'll see that there is a a line connecting each one of these dots or each one of these GPS data points, and those what those indicate are movement. So the likelihood of our suspect, for example, moving out to sea, sorry, out to sea and coming back in is very low, right? So visually, we have four markers here that easily allow us to identify um, four data points that are erroneous inside our data set. So these are, these are patterns we wouldn't be able to see inside a tabular format or without the context of a map. And there are other ways of identifying um, the accuracy of our data. So for example, quite often when we're looking at GPS, Right? When we're talking about accuracy, we're talking about signal strength. So on the image on the right hand side, I have two circles. So the small circle uh, with green data points has a call out next to it with uh, values under 200 meters. Quite often with our data, what we're, what we're getting are values that tell us the accuracy of each one of those data points. And each one of those data points you see inside the green circle is accurate within about 200 meters. 
Then when we move out to the large red circle, we can see that the accuracy of our data points changes. So again, we have that call out with values of around 1,000 meters. That tells me that each one of these data points is accurate only within about 1,000 meters. So what we're seeing, the difference between the, the green circle and the larger red circle, is that the signal strength is probably much stronger and much more accurate in, in the green region than it is in the red region. So this gives us an idea, uh, this gives us the ability to isolate and identify um, data points, uh, GPS data points that have different degrees of accuracy. So those are two things uh, right there that helps us with uh, validating our data, uh, contextualizing it within the proper visualization in a map and the accuracy of the data itself or the signal strength. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is a stationary activity. So what we have here is a, G a 3D view and what you're looking at is time on the vertical axes. So as you move forward in time, you're actually going down, right? So the first event happens at the top, and the last event, hap most recent event, happens towards the bottom. So one of the things we can tell with this visualization is we can tell our, our suspect by each one of these GPS data points moves from the left towards the right, and then in that location in the right, there's lots of data points that pretty much come from the same location. It's not a perfect straight line because with GPS signals, we'll always get a slight variance, right? Even if you're standing still with a GPS device, sometimes you'll get some jitters, right? And what this allows us to identify using this 3D visualization is instances where our suspect is uh, effectively uh, standing still and then moving again. Right? And the importance of being able to identify that is this is a, a, a behavior, right? This is somebody moving in from left to right into the scene of a crime, standing still for about a duration, or rather um, standing within that area with it for about an hour, right, before they move along. So if we know if the crime happens within that about hour and 19 minute window, we can safely say our suspect was within that, uh, within that, within that area. And again, the, the visualization, the 3D visualization, helps us see that moment in time where our suspect was standing still for about an hour. And again, it also allows us to identify other things. So for example, the circle and the, the outline in the top left, we see a bunch of events then we see a bunch of events in the bottom right. But in between, there's no data. So our suspect must have shut off the data or possibly switched cell phones. So if we're looking for patterns in which the, the GPS data is not being collected, um, this is a great example of that. We have a short series of bursts of data, then over a five hour period, nothing, and then again, a series of short bursts of data from our suspect in another location. Next, uh, speed matters. Uh, just as stationary, uh, stationary GPS data points tells us that a suspect is standing still, a change in speed tells us other things. So for example, what we're looking at here is actually GPS data collected from a boat. The larger data points indicate when our suspect is going, or rather the boat is going really fast. Then as they navigate troubled waters, you get these green small data points where they're slowing down. They speed up again, and then they slow down. So we indicate a zigzag pattern uh, using the slope of the line and the size of the dots. So speed tells us um, different characteristics of our suspect movement patterns. Lastly, um, one of the things we should be aware of is that when we are receiving um, location data, quite often the same device can use multiple types of data. So in this example, I'm going to be talking about GSM, right? G sorry, GSM, which is cell tower data, versus GPS, which is satellite data. Quite often, our same suspect, using the same device, will connect to a GPS system 
and a GSM system uh, within the same series of movements. And with each different system, we have different degrees of accuracy again. So again, in the bottom left, you'll see an aggregation of, of green dots. These green dots are coming from a, a GSM system where we have a high degree of accuracy. So we can tell that that data is more or less, uh, more or less accurate. It has, we can see that there's a congregation and a clear series of movement patterns. And if I was to tell you that this was a boat that we're looking at here again, you can, you can notice, you notice there's a high degree of error here because we have many of these uh, data points that are, being collect, that are being collected over land. And what's happening there is our boat is starting to use a GSM system, right, the satellite system, as opposed to the GPS system. So there's a lower degree of accuracy. So our suspect in the boat may be in the water, but because of the inaccuracy of the data being collected, we can see that it makes it appear that they're um, on land. And with the correct visualization, if we map, you know, um, which networks these data are coming with, coming from in our visualization, we can clearly see um, this pattern. And um, thanks, I just wanted to spend five minutes going over um, best practices with GPS data and what visualizations allow you to quickly identify uh, when you're using GPS data.